Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Last time I showed you how to prove this for x being discrete, and hopefully you went away and did the same proof, but uh, supposing x was continuous. Today we're going to show that this, the expected value of a constant times a random variable x plus another constant times a random variable y, is equal to the sum of a times expected value of x plus b times expected value of y. Recall that the word proof is same as the word sh show. Now for this proof we need the following result and it's similar result to the case for just one variable. The expected value of a function g which depends on the two variables x and y is equal to double summation, so summing over x and y, summing over both variables, in other words, of the function times by the joint probability mass function. And that's the case when y and x are discrete. When x and y are continuous, we will simply replace the double summations by integral and we're integrating. This is for when y, x and y are continuous. Note that the integral, both x and y, are over minus infinity to plus infinity. And that's the case for x discrete, uh, the variables being discrete, continuous. You, somebody might ask me, what about if one is continuous, well, one is discrete? Well, uh, in an introductory course, uh, you're not going to encounter that, so don't worry. The proofs are going to be the same whether we do it for the double summation or integral. So, just as before, let's treat it for x and y being discrete. Before I move on, uh, if you're shaky on the double summation, because this is going to be heavy on the double summation, notice I made a video already about how to read double summations. And if this double summation scares you, another notation which makes use of just one sigma sign is this. This means summing over x and y. This symbol is equivalent to this symbol. Before launching into the proof, I know you're all dying for it, let's look at what this function g depending on x and y, let's look at some examples. So here is an example. I take the input being x and y, I feed it into this function g, and what this function g does is it adds, it multiplies x by 2 and adds onto y. Okay. And that's why it's a function of x and y because it involves both x and y. One more example. This is also a function of x and y. Take the x times it by 3, add 5 times y, subtract a number, a constant. Note that the proof that we're doing today, for this case, is like where a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 1. So if we take the expectation of this thing, we know it's going to be 2 times expected value of x plus expected value of y. Recall that this formula is useful because it tells me that if I want to calculate the expectation of the f function of x and y, all I need is the expected value of x and the expected value of y. Uh, and it simplifies this calculation. I don't have to actually do the sum or the integral. I don't have to calculate this thing if I know expected value of x, expected value of y. I just plug it into this uh, equation. So it's much faster. It, uh, it uh, kind of takes away this step. Although to prove it, we need to consider this. One last thing before um, we move on to the proof then. Just look at this. You might ask me, why am I using P here and F here? The, this stands for the probability mass function. It's the probability uh, of observing x and y in terms of set notation probability of x intersection y. And this is carries a similar idea. This is the probability density function. All right, in some books they'll just use 
um, F here as well. Okay, but these two carry the same idea. So first step, 